All right. Um, all righty. So yeah, Shalene just gave us all some great intros, but uh, I'm sure some people here would like to hear a little bit more about uh, you guys' past histories, maybe what you were doing before you got to your uh, residency here at the Clay Studio and uh, some of what you've been doing since then um, and what, what kind of work you're making and whatnot. So uh, I guess, Larry, you are our first resident in the bunch here. You want to get us started? Yeah, I get started here. Um, so right before the residency, uh, I was living in Seattle. So I had taken a year off of school after undergraduate and, uh, you know, just kind of getting the feel for the real world besides uh, academia and uh, decided that I needed to kind of go back you know, and just apply for some residencies. Um, and Missoula kind of was willing to take me. And so that was kind of the, kind of wrote the story right there. Um, do you want me to delve further into kind of like how I got to the Clay Studio? Uh, that, sure, if you want to. I mean, is, I think Montana is one of those places. I think this kind of answers like another question too of, you know, why choose Montana? I think, uh, you know, I went to, I came to Montana a while back before while I was still an undergrad and, uh, you know, I just fell in love with the place and, um, you know, I was like, well, if I can find my way back, hell or high water, I'm going to do it. So, you know, that kind of gives me that, that sort of drive, which is kind of a goal. Definitely get back to Montana. So then you got to fire the Anagamba a bunch during your residency here too? Yeah, yeah. And I think the this kind of segues into the other question, you know, of like issues with the kiln and like, you know, things that I learned from the community. It was, you know, when, when I had arrived, it was, so it was Joseph Piscina, Danny Crump, and Ryan Mitchell was, we were all kind of residents. Ryan was kind of around too. And he was the original person that kind of had the plans and built the kiln and, um, you know, the kiln needed quite a bit of work, some modifications, things like that. And, you know, I think just kind of with a group of people, you know, kind of segue into the ideas of, you know, the wood firing community and how, you know, we all kind of support each other. Um, you know, we did some modifications, added chimney, you know, replaced the floor, certain things like that. And, um, you know, I think, I think that was like something that really helped the clay studio as well you know definitely definitely and so since then you've gone on to um i know grad school at msu and mm -hmm. probably some other stuff in between and after that too right mm -hmm. yeah so you know after the clay studio i did go down to san juan college in farmington new mexico and taught for a couple of years and then uh deciding that you know i wanted to continue my education you know i came back up to Montana while well, applying to grad, graduate schools, uh, MSU was a really good um, option for me. And David Peters had just built the train in at MSU. And so, um, you know, and I was also wanting to come back to Montana. <laughs> um, that really helped me kind of get back into Montana and kind of get a little bit more established, um, you know, financially, but also kind of getting my bearings on, you know, what type of work I wanted to make, how I wanted to make it, how I wanted to fire it, and, um, you know, see what kind of markets I could ex kind of expand to outside of Montana, you know. Uh, it's been hard for me to, to, to sell my work in Montana, but, you know, living in Montana it gives me the opportunity to kind of travel and to, to showcase my work in other places of the country. Cool. Right on. Alrighty, Casey, you want to take over next? Kind of share what got yeah, you to the um, Yeah, before the clay studio in Missoula, I mean, I traveled for years, probably working with different artists and stuff and uh, doing internships or apprenticeships. Um, but, and then I ended up at Montana State uh, as a post back. And then it was kind of, you know, kind of broke. And my girlfriend at the time was in Denver, who's my wife now. Um, so I headed back down to Denver, ended up spending like a year in the kitchen working under different chefs. And then uh, Dave Peters and uh, my buddy Kenyon talked me into applying to the clay studio for the Woodfire resident. See, and then uh, I got that. I don't know when it was like 2010 ish, 11, 13, somewhere in there back in the day. Um, but I've been wanting, I was wanting to come to Montana. You know, I was traveling back and forth to Montana at that point. I don't know. I was firing at the Bray a little bit with my buddy Kenyon. 
and I was firing with Dave up at, um, you know, no, I wasn't firing with Dave. That was after that. I came back up and started firing with Dave. Um, but yeah, I kind of just wandered around um, and then came to the clay studio after that. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, what next, I guess? Um, and after clay studio, I just, I left and I went to Korea and worked with Hung Chung Lee for a while and then got done with that. And I kind of wanted to stop ceramics and I had a show scheduled. So I did the show and then I got picked up by my gallery in New York. And then I guess I've been working in ceramics ever since and still fire the, the kiln at the clay studio probably twice a year. Yeah. It's still a primary tool. Yeah. Still my, yeah. Still my, I still, I gas fire too in between my wood firing. Um, but yeah, it's still my primary tool. Um, and it's definitely improved over the years. Um, the chimney was a big improvement. Yeah. Uh, that in just time in understanding the kiln. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. All right, Perry. How about, how about you? How, uh, how'd you get to, uh, the clay studio and what have you done since? Yeah. So I went to, uh, undergrad at Utah state university. Um, and, uh, my buddy, Danny uh, Crump, uh, came up to the clay studio. We both actually came up to the clay studio because we got into the cup auction one year. Um, and uh, we kind of, um, Hannah Fisher was the uh, director then. And we kind of hung out with Hannah and then Danny ended up doing the residency there. And so I came up and visited Danny and Larry was there at the time as well. And uh, uh, kind of, really saw what the clay studio was about. And uh, it was kind of the only residency at the time that you could go and wood fire. Um, and uh, at least that I knew of. And uh, so that's what, what I was investing or, you know, studying at, at Utah State was wood firing and all different types of firing styles. So, you know, the next best, best thing would be going to clay studio in Missoula. And that's uh, what I set my goals towards. And I got lucky enough that they accepted me, you know, and uh, I got rather got my stuff up to Missoula, and at that time rent wasn't too crazy. Um, I, was, I was still paying like I think seven hundred, eight hundred bucks a month yeah. for a place, but um, uh, I'm sure it's a lot crazier now. But uh, yeah, I was, was there for two years at the clay studio and fired that huge kiln a uh, whole bunch of times. Um, you know, and I was looking at, Ben, a couple of your questions you asked of, like, what, you know, like, talk about, like, the good finds or the bad finds, and, like, man, there was a lot of bad finds. <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> like, there, was, there wasn't a lot of really good ones. Uh, that kiln was, when I was firing, it was really hard to fire. Um, it was, uh, it was, if we got temperature in the back, I was happy, essentially. Um, and uh, the best find that I remember was, uh, probably the last one I did there was with uh, the Invitational when we had like 30 people there to, to fire it with and we kind of just uh, blew the pants off of it and just went for it right away and uh, a lot of ex experienced people were there as well so yeah I mean uh, firings were a little different back then too a little bit longer yeah yeah, yeah. You're, you're you guys still fire long. though for like eight days don't you yeah, well, yeah, you know, but still preheating, you know, two days ago, yeah. preheating, but you know, you still got to burn with a kiln that big, you still got to burn eight cords of wood. Yeah, at that's least, true. you know, you know, get yeah. the results that you want. Yeah, because you guys are preheating for what a couple, at least two or three days or something. Yeah, like that? yeah, firing yeah. a little green, you know, but, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. You know, you know, surface wise in that kiln, it's just so big, and to get the surface you want, you got to put enough wood through there and at least a cord, cord and a half of cottonwood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's crazy it's a, it's a huge kiln you know yeah. and like for a lot of people you know first taking that you know like you walk there and you walk up to that kiln it's a huge undertaking you know and yeah yeah like it's the size of a you know pretty decent sized truck you know and uh well, now you're not your little toyota <laughs> my little toyota could get in there easy man. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's a pretty uh -huh. crazy kiln and you know it's like great thing to learn from though too you know like i learned so much from being at the clay studio in missoula and uh working with the community there and uh 
community in Montana in general. You know, uh, it's what the Clay Studio has uh, is amazing. You know, the the community is everyone's all for it there. You know, and it takes a huge group of people to fire that kiln. You know, so. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. How, just out of curiosity, how long was like your longest firing? Any of you guys, like 10, 12 days? I think uh, I think Casey's got the one on here. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> I think twelve yeah. days is the longest. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I think everything was glued to the shelves by the end of that firing. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds yeah. terrible. <laughs> well, we used like six cords of cottonwood. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big mistake <laughs> i mean we had glaze for sure <laughs> yeah oh man yeah learning experience chalk it up to yeah i mean, I, mean I when you use that much cottonwood you only get certain surfaces but i don't think i'll ever do that again <laughs> fair enough <laughs> yeah all right well yeah. you guys have all kind of touched on it you know kind of your experiences here in montana and a little bit why you've stayed you know like larry you talked about just falling in love with the area and whatnot. And for the other two, I feel like some of the kilns and community kind of added to it too. Um, are there any other major reasons why you guys have chosen to all stay in Montana and kind of make your careers here? Well, community, you know, and then access to materials. And then my buddies, my wood fire buddies have been around here and it made sense. Plus it's great for marketing to be in Montana. Everyone loves a Montana potter or artist yeah yeah i mean there's a lot of uh you know there's a lot of firewood in montana <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's pretty easy to come by um and uh it's good wood to use here too you know we got the cotton wood like casey uses a lot i, I use a decent amount and, and then the um you know ponderosa and fir and lodgepole it's all it's all here and ready to go so um yeah it's uh pretty good resource you know and why not why not be in montana you know yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, mean, yeah I think the same you know the availability of material I and mean, then land was still pretty cheap i mean not in the last couple of months here but you know <laughs> And also, I think also too, like staying in montana i, I really wanted to stay closer to the clay studio and and um you know, I don't live in Missoula, but it's pretty close. Um, and I think for me, it's like, I, I had such a profound, like the clay studio has such a profound influence on like how I view like an art center, a ceramic center and how, how just, just the, 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 the community in which how ceramics brings people together is really important. Um, I mean, I know that the Bray is here as well in Helena and Red Lodge. Um, but like the clay studio itself is for me, it's, it's, a uh, there's like, there's nothing like it. And, you know, talking to a, like Fuminori, you know, he, he's like, he's like, wow, I've never seen this before. And, um, you know, and I, and I, and I tell people when I travel, it's like, you guys got to go to the clay studio. And like, if you're into wood firing, you know, they don't have many wood kilns, but the experience that you get, it's not like any other, it's not like an academic setting where, you know, people are throwing things in and experimenting. It's, I mean, they, they are at the clay studio, but it's a little more free form. It's not so uh, structured. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, like, um, you know, being young, like when I, when I was a resident, you know, like, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, it's a hell of an experience for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and it's a large kiln, so you can make large sculpture. You can make whatever kind of work you want pretty much and fire in that kiln. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, kind of on the topic of community too. I mean, how has has it changed? All of you guys have fired the film as residents, and then since then, as uh, you know, professional artists who have come back and fired the Onagama. So how have your kind of experiences with the community? Like, how were they as a resident? How did it change? Maybe as a professional, um, and maybe even for you guys that have moved out of the area. You know, what is what is your community like now in comparison to maybe? Um, what it was like as a as a resident yeah i um i, I learned a lot at the clay studio in missoula and uh, the community side of things uh was a huge part of it and it's, it was a really great um uh, great thing to learn but i kind of went the opposite direction of actually going with less people 
involved in my firings and uh, the way I wanted to do things. Um, I think as a learning tool, the community is really good. Um, and uh, But at a certain time, I, I felt the need. I had to step away from community in a huge part uh, and kind of just separate myself from that and do it and be able to focus on what I wanted to achieve um, because there's a lot of opinions in the community and it's hard to get everyone on the same page, you know? Um, and that right there is a job in itself, you know? And uh, so um, I slowly was able to kind of step away from community and the way I did residencies and um, ended up finding a place that I could build my own kiln. So, uh, but I know these guys have, a, you know, use a community a lot more different than I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Go ahead, Larry. Larry. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that there is like what, what Perry is saying, you know, like I, I don't think I'd ever be able to kill that big. Yeah. No, like I don't and like that's it's a huge kiln and it's great. It brings it it draws the attention and it brings people in and you know it's good for people to learn from, but like the kiln I have is like probably a quarter if I'm lucky that of that size. Um and like that was one of I think that's one of the, the pitfalls of the kiln in Missoula is like you're committed and once again like being young you know like you gotta make work for like months to fill that thing and then like when you have a firing and it turns out terrible you're just like whoa yeah. <laughs> and uh, i mean that's like that i could there could be other adjectives i could use to describe that but <laughs> um, yeah. yeah yeah and you know yeah yeah, no, I mean, you can't fire without a community, a team of a, at least eight or, or six. You can try, but you can be pretty worn out by the end of it. But, you know, if it wasn't for that killing, I, I probably wouldn't have the career. I, I wouldn't have the career I have. Um, the bale of fire worked that big because I don't know where else you'd fire, find a kiln that big, unless it was gas kiln. The fire worked like that in a wood kiln. Um, and I definitely couldn't load my work without a community. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'd be a little stuck. Um, but, you know, that... The, the resident te teaches you to manage, you know, I, I think, you know, you, you fire a whole bunch, you get to know the kiln and stuff like that, but you really learn management skills and how to manage people, you know, because it's a lot of different personalities. And when you have 15, 17 people in your class, yeah, that's a lot of people to manage and to understand that not everyone's going to be happy with the way you fire. And sometimes you have to fire the way you want to and that stuff. So, you know, it, it's a good good learning experience and like maturity and growth that way and I don't know if that's for everyone but it was for me and that and I still fire you know I still fire with crews of pretty much eight to ten people and that and there's no way you can fire that kiln with less I mean you could try but you're gonna kill yourself yeah super exhausting yes yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know I couldn't agree more just like learning the management skills of a large group of people like it you, you just you get thrown into it um, yeah and then but, you know everything that's involved in it, pricing how much wood costs how much you know this and that costs and you know the real reality of things you know but the clay studio you're able for two years pretty much to fire without having to worry about cost mm -hmm. yeah this is really important for i think all of us were pretty young and probably not exactly wealthy when we were <laughs> residents um mm -hmm. uh oh do i have internet Hello. <laughs> Still there. Hey, bud. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, no, like I said, definitely agree. Um, one huge perk though. I mean, I guess I haven't experienced the post-residency firings yet, but uh, boy, when you get a good group of students out there and a good group of people, like sometimes they can make it pretty cush, you know, yeah. I remember a couple of shifts in my most recent firings, you know, as time went on, had a more, more and more dedicated crew. And next thing you know, it was like, I'd show up on shift to like piles of split wood and like somebody would have a hot meal and some baked cookies. And you're just like, what? Yeah. This is way cooler than firing with undergrads. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, everybody for space to kill them. So um, <laughs> can't complain there. That's for sure. Well, especially when you come into the residency, the community has so much experience. They kind of, they kind of help you along. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. You their wing a little bit. Yeah. You need to learn how to fire the kiln from the community members because yeah. Yeah. odds are you haven't been firing a kiln that size before now. Yes. I think one cool. of the things that I learned from firing 
at the clay studio too is like how not just like the people management but like how the kiln works because so it's such a large kiln everything takes 24 hours to kind of make a, a, a change and um you know like insulation that was like one of my biggest takes from firing mm -hmm. that kiln because when we first started firing it you know like the kiln was insulated um and then also too like understanding how bricks work um you know i think for me it's like to have that kind of crash course and like failure um it really helped for me to understand like yeah you you need to insulate that or like yeah like you probably need to tell a chimney or like um you know and like that's something that i i try to teach like people that come over and fire with me is like how you how a kiln is designed is is kind of how it's going to fire um you know like you can't get results like the clip like the anagama at the clay studio anywhere else because the sheer um the the thermal dynamics of the kiln and like mm -hmm. that's that's really impactful for me on how like I talk about the clay studio. Yeah, kind of how your work changes when you fire this kiln and then when you leave and move to the next one, you kind of change your work again to adapt to the next kiln. Yeah, and like you just kind of, for me, it's like I just use it as tools in my bank of like, of like if something's going array, I can, I can always, you know, think about the previous firings, you know, I mean, I'm pretty, I think we've all fired the kiln more than six or seven times now. So it's like, I mean, that's a lot of hours of learning. Yeah. And like, I think being a resident really allows for you to kind of fully envelop in that and like develop like how you want to develop work and what type what type of clays are gonna work for you and what type of wood, right? We just talked about the cottonwood thing and how we want to fire and how we want to down fire or versus not down firing. So, you know, yeah. that- the, the an interesting thing to touch base on that is, uh, you know, uh, the style of kiln, the nanagama. You know, uh, that's this is kind of like a mix between an anagama and a groundhog style kiln. You know, and uh, uh, you get completely different results from that if unless you're using like a train kiln or like a kiln like Larry's, like a catenary kiln. You know, and like each clay body works differently in each different kiln. You know, and like you know, like uh, it's all they're kind of formulated for certain types of kilns and stuff like that. So for me, it was a um, uh, it was kind of a curveball to leave the clay studio Missoula and go to Red Lodge and fire a train kiln again because all my clay bodies had to change again. You yeah, because didn't you have like six clay bodies when you're at the clay studio, if I can remember? Yeah, yeah. And those all those clays were are meant for slow heat, you know, yeah. slow heat. And uh um in a train kiln you need uh uh you know clay bodies that can take um surface really quickly because you're not firing for as long, you know. So that was a huge um, change for me, but it was a great learning experience for sure. And um, yeah, just uh, another tool to have in the bag when I when I fire an Agama. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that kind of seg segues into another question I had about just like firing, you know, the Anagama, and then some of the other kilns you guys have all ex had experience with. Um, around the state, you know, the train kilns at Red Lodge, the kilns at the Arch Bray, some of the kilns at MSU, um, you know, Dave Peters, Trainagama and whatnot. You guys have all kind of had opportunities to fire a lot of these kilns. Um, I'm curious if like any one of these kilns has kind of stood out to be like a favorite or anything or uh, um, and kind of like how like your experience with all of these kilns has affected your guys' decisions. Like Perry, you said you built a train, Larry, you've got a cat kiln you know, Casey, I've heard your schemes on different kilns you'd want to build. Um, you guys want to kind of elaborate yeah. on that? Yeah, I think uh, Clay Studio Missoula kilns is always going to be the number one kiln in my book. You know, uh, it's it's unlike any other kiln out there. And uh, it's a you know, it's truly one of a kind kind of kiln. So, you know, uh, as hard as and much effort it is to fire, it's still probably one of my favorites in Montana for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I would have to agree with that. You know, like I've been firing my kill now. I think I've got like nine firings and some, sometimes I, I have to remember like I'm not firing an Anagama and like, I'm like, well, it's a quarter of the time and a quarter of the wood, but yeah, there's nothing like the Anagama at the clay studio. Um, you know, and like for me, like also too, like there's some Anagamas that I fire that don't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. and it's and it's 
it's it's tricky because you know you, you want to try to throw what you know at the clay studio kiln at another kiln you're like oh that didn't work <laughs> yeah 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 no I, I i mean i fired all kinds of kilns and i've tried my work in all kinds of kilns um you know my work for surface wise needs time you know i need the eight days of firing for a, get the surface and it lends itself to an onagama or tunnel kiln style um and that and I think I'll always fire longer. You know, I like the idea of firing shorter, but I don't think I get the surface I need for my work. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I think also another uh, kiln that comes to mind that's uh, kind of a, along the same lines of the place your kiln is the Lubert kiln as well. You know, there's oh, yeah. a long, that's a really old kiln as well. And uh, it's kind of like a, in a special little place there but, um, as well. And uh, um, I've never, I've never fired it successfully, but, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a cool yeah. film too, you know? Yeah. I think we fired all the kilns together at, at one point or another, haven't we? <laughs> I've never fired Lubric, so yeah, I, we're, I, 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 Lubric, it, but, um, I, I kind of, Ray I'm kiln, ready for that kind of lad, <laughs> Dave's kiln up at, uh, MSU, the chubby train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's Tom's kiln up here in Whitefish Pottery too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I haven't that fired now, sucker yet. Yeah, that that that's like a true onagama with that yeah. twenty three degree step. I mean, yeah, it's, it's super steep, right? Super steep, and I think you know, and you know, the like kiln design wise, the clay studio kiln that that flat floor really helps. You know, kind of get a like you can get a lot of work in there, but also too, there's a lot of variation of how you stack the kiln, and you know, you can do shelf tumble stack, shelf tumble stack, and most kilns you can't do that. Except, yeah. I mean, trains, yes. But they're not like the same size and scale. Even yeah. like a double wide wouldn't give you that same sort of surface. You know, and the, and the clay studio kiln is pretty slow flame wise. It's not like ripping through the kiln, you know. So, and I feel like it was made for like big jars or something, you know, bigger work. It, it tends to lend itself to flame wise. Mm -hmm. that, that is just my opinion. Yeah, no, totally. That, that kiln is meant for big stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What Ryan was making at the time, right? When he, yeah. when he built the kiln, big sculpture yeah. and whatnot, had to fit all that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. it's, it's meant for someone that wants to go big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, and it, it pushes you too. I mean, this I know the scale of my work increased pretty dramatically once I got up here just because of that push, you know. Like you said earlier, it's a big kiln to fill. And if you can make a couple big pots, that's a few hundred mugs you don't have to make yeah. for your right. firing. Yeah, I it didn't makes, make any big work for that kiln. I've never had. But. <laughs> it, it makes the work look got bigger. Yeah. yeah, it makes big work look small, right? Yeah, yeah, that is true. Definitely. So, yeah, I guess would you guys say like practicality is kind of why the two of you that have built kilns, your own kilns, um, haven't built like a big onagama? For example, like practicality, a, a, a ability to fire without a giant community, Perry or Larry or yeah. yeah, I mean, I built a kiln mainly so that uh, I don't, you know, when I get older, I don't have to worry about bending over all the time. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, I can walk, I can stand yeah. in my kiln. So uh, yeah, you start doing yoga. Yeah, yeah. I gotta train my son <laughs> yeah. to, to load the kiln for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. but uh, no. yeah, I can I can fire my kiln pretty much by myself. So. Um, that's kind of what I was going for. I think I think with with, uh, with like the kiln I have now, I think if I had the avail more available materials um, and more more land, I think I would build a bunch of kilns. But I mean, right now I'm pretty content. I still got to work this one out. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I'm I I. I I'm okay with not firing big kilns. Like it's not a thing that I feel like I need to do. Like I, I think the clay studio kind of worked that out of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yeah. You know, if I had to build in my dream situation when I can afford property someday, I think I, I would build a, a tighter onagama, maybe a little bit tighter arch, but something like, you know, five by five or something in that. So I had a closer flame. Um, tighter around the pots and then I would build their kiln uh, for the large sculpture gas assist and wood um, just to make my life easier something I could load my work in with like a forklift or something like that 
Um, but, you know, that kiln demanding on size and you have to have a huge crew and it costs quite a bit of money to fire it every time. Where if I had a smaller kiln, it might be a little bit more manageable all around. Yeah, definitely. I think that's another thing that I learned from firing the Anagama is like definitely preheat and gas. Like yes. I'm not, by any means, I'm not a purist, and I've mentioned this to everybody. I think that's that's hung out with me long enough where it's like, yeah, I'll put gas on that thing until I get color. I don't really mind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Save some overnight shifts. Yeah, yes. sleep through the graveyard. Yeah, it's yeah. all all about the little uh, little cheats that you figure out along the way. You know. Yeah. 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 It's all yeah, like, those are all the little good tools that you figure out. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, yeah, and like I think this might be a question that I'd like to hear from from all three of you. Um, is like, how what what has the clay studio done like for that 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 specific kiln for how you want to end the firing? Because I get a lot of questions all the time about like why I do this, why I do that, and you know to get you guys' perspective, um, I think would be really kind of informative for me. Well, God, I, I think I cooled that kiln every which way possible um, from oxidized to super reduction to, you know, when I was fine with you, Larry, we would do like a, like, I don't know, neutral atmosphere, I guess I'd call it like semi reduction, like just a little hazy in there, just a little wind um, and that. And, but, you know, now I cool a little bit harder than we were cooling with you, but you know, it's crystal growth, you know, um, building surface, another layer of surface as, a, as you cool down. Know that answers your question. Uh, I kind of uh, learned uh, what I don't want to do really with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I was uh, firing it, uh, I remember it was such a, like an ordeal, such a show. You know, it was like throw as much wood in the kiln as you can, and then close all the doors off, and you know, and like get this sugary surface and. Uh, create all this smoke and reduction and stuff like that and so it was just like a fiery hell at the very end of the firing you know and uh, yeah. it was super crazy and um, super intense and I mean you get a that sh you get all different depends on you know you get all different surfaces on how you finish it you know but uh, I personally mine now mine's like super lame I just pretty much slowly close the damper and that's it now. <laughs> uh, you know but uh but that kiln, it's all about experimentation, you know, I think too, at the time when I was firing it. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and I think the, the way the kiln has been, has been fired has changed over time. I know when I first started, I was firing with all three doors and then I went down to two doors and now I'm just firing with one door in a bigger firebox in the center, which has made it quite a bit easier. You know, especially closing down at the end. I mean, I remember having to close all three doors up and plug up, plug up the hole. It was so hot. You'd just be like dead after. Yeah. Yeah, no, maintaining energy for the end. That was something I definitely learned after definitely yeah. my first firing, you know, um, where I'd been up for, you know, you're up there for a couple of days trying to finish the thing on no sleep and whatever you finish is how you finish. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and I learned pretty quickly just how open the kiln was because before I came up here, I was kind of doing like Perry was saying, the very big stuff at full reduction, cool as hard as you can type of firing back at MSU. And I really liked those results, but I couldn't figure out for a long time how to do it with this kiln as just big and open as it was. And then, I don't know, finally kind of dialed it in again on these last couple firings and realized I just needed to have like such a big coal bed and put so much wood in that it would like you could create enough positive pressure to like push the oxygen out and keep it from sucking in and um, I mean I've been happy with those results I think those have been my best firing since I've been here so yeah but more than anything it came down to figuring out how to organize a schedule so that I could sleep before the end of the firing and you know yeah. go into it with enough awareness to actually do that. Yeah. You know, I remember my first firing here, I was, you know, 30, 35 hours deep. I was up long enough that we got to the end and I just kind of like looked at the kiln and was like, wait, what do I do? <laughs> How do I shut yeah. this thing down? I sat there and like scratch my head and was like, I had no, no idea what to even do. Like, How do you shut down a wood kiln? So, yeah, I feel like that's a rite <laughs> of passage in wood firing. You got to go through that shit once in a while to like get on to like the fact like, oh, I got to figure something else. So I don't do this anymore. 
<laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you could you could go to the fact of uh, reduction cooling it, you know, and then it's like, oh, I got another yeah of 16 the whole day left yeah. <laughs> you know and it's like the, the most tedious little part of it is just putting a little piece of wood in here and you know and like but i mean it really depends i mean the the closing of a firing uh is really important you know so it's kind of a, a big part of it you know depending on how you want that surface to be and uh you know that's why the cooling part of it the reduction cooling i always thought was like you really earn it because you got to sit there and slowly yeah. pull this kiln. And like, uh, I think it just kind of gives you a little bit extra luck, hopefully in the firing, you know, if you do that and really sit there and do that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's tough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I definitely like the results when kilns are cooled more than when they're just oxidized cooling. You know, yeah. um, I definitely learned that over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But who wants? But who wants to sit there and do that? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm about yeah, it. I don't. I'm, 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 I'm out. I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm all in. Just sit there and just like sit there. Yeah. You know, yeah. that whole week of chaos to like finally have a kiln shift where you're supposed to sit in your chair and yeah. it's like it's quiet again. You know, after that first hour or two when the kiln's pretty grumbly, it's like it gets quiet and that kiln is in such a pretty place. It's like yeah you kind of hang out there and kind of like half nap your way through yeah. <laughs> i don't know i always liked it um, i just yeah. turn my gas burner back on <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm not kidding you i mean when i get the temperature and i and like the kiln's starting to calm down now like i just put a propane tank burner on there put it on full bore and then have i can get eight hours out of a tank yeah. <laughs> i come back from a nap when i wake up and i unplug the 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 propane burner and I still get that positive pressure, you know. Nice. Yeah, Larry, smart. You're a smart man. Smart man. <laughs> I need to. I need to fire with you more. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. Well, do any of you guys have any other questions for everybody here, or comments, or anything? Anything still still on your mind about uh, you know, your your uh, clay studio experience or your uh, Anagama experience? Mm. no yeah <laughs> burn a lot of wood <laughs> burn a lot of wood cool. yeah all righty yeah. well how about uh anybody else listening in um does anybody have questions for for our panelists or i i have a question hey. yeah hey jenna hey um do any of you guys know the name of the anagama at the clay studio does it have a name yeah. I don't know. I think it did. Uh, it was something that uh, Ryan Matthew Mitchell, um, he said something about it. Uh, he named it after Hannah Fisher or something like that. Didn't he? Yeah. Him? yeah, I think for a while it was being referred to initially as the Hannah Gama. And then um, <laughs> then there was some question as to like when the changes, if it wanted to be rechristened anything, but it's the only name it's ever had is the Hanagama. So I would attribute the actual official name to be the Hanagama. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> now we know. Wow. I just call it the Clay Studio on a go. I just call it the Beast. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shalene, is, is there anything that you want to add to like, because you've had probably five or six wood fire residents now have you seen any changes in like in like how it operates or how like what what you kind of expect what the residents you know outcome to be or you know or have you seen like residents just completely like fall flat on their face I mean any, <laughs> any sort of like yeah you know it's been interesting because I mean I've been um the first wood fire I mean I guess the first official wood fire resident would have been Brian Matthew Mitchell who was a resident at the time that I was a resident at the clay studio of Missoula so um so you know since that, during that time there's been several of uh, um wood fire residents go through and um it's been What's been really interesting is watching the con connections develop throughout the community and the consistency of the people involved in that program and how um, those connect how those connections are maintained um, as that program has grown because there have been some a lot of community members that have been um, 
involved with the firing for quite some time. And I think, you know, one of you touched on that for sure, um, is that fact that um, the resident comes there and really learns a lot from the community. And so it's sort of this tradition where um, as the program's gotten more established, um, a real focus on that is to um, seek residents who really want to have that immersive experience and like really being part of the community experience and leading a team. And as you've all like kind of spoken to is that sort of that management of people and working together with people in order to create the successful firing. And um, the kiln has definitely grown and changed over time. Um, significant improvements have definitely made, I mean, you know, I think Larry, you were, you know, your fire, like when, when you're, you're experiencing firing it is like the very earliest on when it was in pretty rough shape, <laughs> like as far as like trying to get into temperature and stuff like that. And I know Perry had a lot of that too. And then, um, you know, some insulation improvements were made, but really with um, Scott McClellan's um, sort of rebuild of the back and the extension of that chimney, that was sort of that game changer that made it sort of a more reasonable kiln to fire at that size. I mean, I'd have to say from my experience, I mean, if anybody knows my work, they know how, they can see how little I probably know about wood fire, <laughs> how little I wood fire really, <laughs> and how much of an expert I am on wood firing. But, um, but really, um, you know, it has been really interesting just kind of watching that kiln grow and people like dial things in over time. And, um, you know, it wouldn't be up, I mean, it wouldn't be where it is today without the residency program and the hard work of all of you have put into it, building it and, you know, making it what it is and, you know, creating improvements and making suggestions and work, and then also the community members that work with it. So, you know, that's kind of my long meandering answer to that question, but, um, you know, I think um, a lot of people get through the program, um, especially those who have stayed pretty much almost everybody stays for two years. And that kind of speaks in volumes of how, what this community means to those residents that have come through here. So um, it's a pretty neat thing to be a part of and bear witness of too, as well, so. Yeah, one year's not enough. <laughs> yeah. Definitely takes two to learn that kiln for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's an interesting. I'm just sitting here looking at you all, and I'm the only one here who hasn't fired this kiln as the old kiln before the Scott's chimney rebuild. Yeah. Um, and I can't say I'm jealous. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty okay with this. <laughs> it's running but, pretty sweet now. Yeah. I mean, it's totally different now. We had to get our, we had to like go steal the old man's trailer to get wood. And yeah. that was like our thing. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Getting pretty smooth. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Hey, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Hey. Um, <laughs> I, we've been using uh, one of Perry's traditions uh, during the um, <laughs> during the reduction cooling. You know, it's the return of the Red Rider. It comes out for those for the <laughs> 14 hours. And uh, the, the uh, you know, we didn't come up with uh, all of the different ways to set up beer cans and shoot them down in the old days. A lot of new ones coming up now. <laughs> so I just didn't notice uh, Perry started the Red Rider and so it still comes out. And But we all know one thing now, uh, you, you don't shoot a pot with the red because a good <laughs> shot on a pot brings that BB right past your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a definite ricochet. So just beer cans and such. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be saying this around the director of the Clay Studio. <laughs> <laughs> the red, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a, the red fighter BB gun. Is that, I mean, that can't be a problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's something, there's something worse than that. I mean, uh, oh. the, these three guys have all drove Phil Mann's dump truck, you yeah. know, and that's a hell of a lot more dangerous than a BB gun. <laughs> it is a feat. Yeah. Yeah. Per Perry drove uh, 
Dave's big fork forklift. I don't know. Did you did you ever drive the road grader, Perry? No, I never got the road grader. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of good old stories like that around the Clay Studio. Well, <laughs> right. somebody somebody still grading the road. No, nice. Hi, Dave. And I'm assuming it's Dave, right? Yeah. Yeah. So well, we're still blessed his presence. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That's cool that the Red Rider still lives on. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Comes yeah. out every firing now. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, we would we would decorate all those trees with beer cans. <laughs> so many beer cans left over after a firing, and uh, Ben's yeah. a pretty good shot. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Maybe that's why I like production cooling. <laughs> yeah, right. it's not for the pots. <laughs> it's for glad. <gliding. laughs> yeah. Well, this is probably another funny topic to bring up. I'm sure Shaleen doesn't like to hear this, but the amount of uh, booze that has been uh, consumed up at a wood kiln uh, has been quite a bit as well so yeah. uh, I, I probably shouldn't talk about it but yeah <laughs> this is edit that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the truth it's the truth yeah. Yeah. and you know what it has been in interesting because I think over the years like that sort of that, that's been tempered a little bit uh because it's like yeah because you are firing this big thing that you're responsible for I mean, Ben and I were just talking about that the other day, and he's like, oh, my God, I have to just be so focused. I have to have all my wits about me, so. <laughs> yeah, well, it was kind of nice. This last, our invitational just now, we had, like, 95-degree days, which definitely kept people sober. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, a little yeah. more focused, but, yeah. you know, I think we got our good party and done at the unload. <laughs> yes. Yeah, wait till the pots look good. Yes. Wait until things are hot. Yeah. yeah wait till they're hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah finished but yeah no a lot of people have had a lot of fun up there i'd say <laughs> yeah be the pg way of saying it <laughs> yeah. A whole lot of fun. <laughs> yeah cool well anybody else out there have some questions for us or yeah hey richard hey guys um hey richard Hey folks, I just want to say one thing, and that's that on behalf of the board and Shaleen, you guys are making us so proud um, for what you're doing. You're, you're a great ambassador for the organization. This is a community-based model, right? But more than that, I just look at all of you and say, you've gone on, you've matured, you've become professional. And, you know, as somebody that's been in the background all this time, I, I just want to say you make me proud. And um, thank you for all you've done to help me. Really, it's, it's a big deal that you're, um, you're out there doing your prof you know, professional work and, and have a professional practice. So Ben's going to join you uh, after this and, and <laughs> in the sense of becoming what, who you are. But you've matured so much. And Perry, you know, those those days when you were here, it was like, we said Perry Haas came here as a young man and left as a much, much wiser man. And you know, that's, a, that's a true story. I mean, you look like a baby when you showed up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's so well, true. If you change that beard, I bet he still looks like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's been uh, 15, 20 years of a uh, beautiful ride with all of you. So thanks and uh, keep up the great work. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, thanks, Richard. All right. Yeah, anybody else? We all talked out. I'm good. Good. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, thank, thank you so much, everyone. And yeah. We'll have this recorded and up. We're, I'm trying to figure out how to put this on our YouTube channel from the past. So we'll have all this stuff archived. So um, yeah, thank you so much for engaging in conversation today. And I hope to see all of you um, sooner rather than later. Um, enjoy your trips to Michigan. Maybe I'll see you before then, Casey, but, yes. <laughs> but Perry, enjoy your trip and Larry, hopefully see you soon. And thank you all of us for joining us today. Yes. Thanks for having us, Ben. Julian. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Julian. Yeah.